All right, welcome back, everybody. This is Peter Renna coming back with another top five toys for you this week. I had fun doing uh, the G.I. Joe Classified series last week, so I'm looking to bring you another list uh, this week. Now, I'm going to share this list with my buddies at uh, Tales from the Flipside, where I also do shows, because uh, I just want to spread this, you know, spread this video series out to as many people as possible. So hopefully, you know, more people can get their eyes on it and uh, you know, tell me what you guys think, uh, what we would like to see, make suggestions. I mean, granted, this is only episode two, so there's not a lot to go on yet. But uh, this week, I'm going to kind of just shift focus, I'm not doing G.I. Joe again, obviously. This week, I'm going to do Marvel Legends. But since that is such a wide and expansive toy line, I'm going to focus mostly on the uh, retro carded series that have come out the uh, last couple of years. You know, the ones you go in and you can see that they're, you know, on the hangers. They look kind of like the Toy Biz series from way, way back from the uh, the original regular Marvel series to the X-Men. And they've uh, come out with a Spider-Man series as well, where they're using that throwback carded look as well as the figures looking like those original uh, Toy Biz figures. Updated, obviously. But uh, I kind of dig it. And, uh, yeah, I just thought it's a fun series. They've only been doing those a couple of years now, and I thought now would be a good time to look at those because we actually have a few. I'm supposed to be releasing uh, this week, you know, coming up. Actually, not this week, up next week. Uh, I think November 29th is a lot of the uh, release dates I've seen listed online, whether that's the actual release date or what, but that's the listed release date for some of these figures coming up. So I'm going to do the top five list here, and if you on the Tales from the Flipside channel. And if you are interested in seeing the hot honorable mentions that I'm gonna be doing of those upcoming figures that are soon to be released, I'm gonna do those attached to a longer form video uh, I'm gonna do on my own channel there. So again, just gonna spread it out so you guys can take and you know take what you like and uh, yeah, hopefully enjoy. So with that said, let's just get right into the list. So again, I'm doing the Marvel Legends, the retro carded figures. And uh, the first one out of the gate we're going to go with is uh, Spider-Man. This is from the original line Spider-Man. There is a newer release uh, Spider-Man with that uh, kind of throwback Spider-Man card as well. And that one does okay. But uh, this one edged it out just a tiny bit. So I have to go with the 2017 version of the figure where he's in there packaged with the pizza and you got the mask lifted up. It kind of reminds me of uh, that little scene in Into the Spider-Verse where uh, you know, Peter was uh, chowing down on some pizza in there. But uh, yeah, that figure, it's averaging a little over $33. I mean, these again, all these figures for the most part are a 1999 buy-ins. Uh, that's what they are on the shelves. I mean, granted, you might be able to find them on sale, get them at a discount. and uh, But for the most part, they're about 20 bucks to buy. So... Yeah, it's not a huge return. You're not going to see a lot of big returns on uh, this series here yet because, I don't know, it's just just minor increases. There's not a lot of demand because I think there's a lot of supply for the most part in these. I've seen these on the shelves, uh, not, re not lately, because I know some stores have had some, having some trouble restocking, you know, amidst uh, COVID and everything. But uh, I had seen these a lot on the shelves uh, yeah, when I was back out in the stores and looking. But that being said, so this one, the Spider-Man figure, Again, he comes packaged in it's pretty cool with the pizza. It's an updated design. It's not like the old school Toy Biz figure that, uh, you know, with the big chunky look. But uh, I don't know. It's kind of cool. Again, like a $13 profit on it isn't huge, but eh, if you wanted to flip it, then you can make a couple of bucks. Uh, so, with that said, we're going to move on from Spider Man to another figure from that same in the toy line with number four. And uh, that's the Wolverine figure. Now, Wolverine, again, it's not much more. It's only averaging maybe about 34 bucks, you know, whereas Spidey was a little over 33, but it's still pretty cool. I actually really dig the fact that they added the uh, this kind of like pull down hood that you can add in. Like there's the maskless look, but I think around the neck you could put on this, like his hood being pulled down look. That's that's kind of something you didn't get a lot of toys, especially not back, uh, back in the day toys. Again, these are retro guarded figures, you know, going back to those toy biz figures and those toy biz figures came out in the you know the early 90s where I was a little old to be getting toys but I still got them because I like to collect and still like to collect them these figures are really cool I remember the older ones again with the uh the Wolverine from the original series I think came on the X-Men card so it's not like a match to match card on this one but the mask coming off on that one was more of just like a a little clip on like the uh like the Oscar mask that they have for some of the WWE figure now it just kind of like it snaps around from the face and I think the, the claws are spring loaded, but those springs didn't work very well. They always kept popping out, you know, on their own, you know, independent of any uh, intention you might have had to uh, release them on your own. But hey, it was what it was. I mean, that was a step forward from anything that was before, where uh, it was basically just, you know, straight up and down, uh, you know, the Kenner Star Wars figures or even the G.I. Joe's that had a lot of motion, but there wasn't a lot of add-ons and additives like that with some spring loaded action and things like that. You have to go back to like the superpowers, you know, doing their little, uh, fisticuffs uh, to get any sort of a 
you know, anything added into the figure to make them a little more uh, I guess exciting for kids. But I digress. Moving on to number three. Number three on this list is one that I don't remember seeing an original figure uh, in the old school Toy Biz lines before they went to the more of the uh, molded, sculptured kind of look that we get that we get a little bit later in the early like two thousands. But uh, the Vision from also that uh, well, this is the twenty eight series. So this was like the next series and the next uh, wave of these retro carded figures, uh, you know, for Marvel there. And this Vision one is, is really nice looking figure. It's got the classic look. Uh, I like it on the classic card. It's just got a really cool look to it. And that one, you know, again, it's 20 bucks to go buy, but you know, this one's getting closer to 37 on a, you know, on a flip on an average, you know, there's some highs where you can see some sales in the, you know, like $45, but uh, on an average, it is around that uh, like $37 range. So yeah, it is what it is. Now another figure, uh, this one I had, I'm not sure if I still have it or not, but uh, the next one on the list going down to number two is going to be a uh, storm. Now, this Storm is the uh, white version of the character. They've recently come out with another uh, you know, black suited version, but this white suit Storm was uh, was really hot when it first came out. And uh, you know that one had some pretty high sales. I think it sold for like 70 bucks like at one time. Uh, now I think it's averaging closer to about 37, 38. Uh, so it's come down quite a bit. I don't know if it's because they have that black suited figure out there now as like an alternative, but this was from the uh, 2019 series where they did the X-Men card at, uh, uh, figures that again that are referenced with the Wolverine before and you can see that old school you know orange cover box I remember it you know, so vividly from uh, again from when I was younger so this one kind of drew me in uh, to want this one and it's pretty cool you know to get the white suited storm I mean I still want like a mohawked uh, storm in this classic uh, box but yeah what are you gonna do so that was our number two now, going down through the list, my number one, or not even my number one, the number one on the list, this is actually uh, more of an exclusive figure. I think it was at uh, San Diego Comic-Con, and there, it's going to be two. Uh, it's two different versions of the same figure it is going to be our number one. So I'm going to do uh, the, lower, the lower return first and then hit up the higher one uh, next. So as for number two, as I said, this was a San Diego Comic-Con, I think, exclusive. This is uh, the Hulk, and the Gray Hulk is the uh, cheaper version for uh, one reason or another. I don't know if it's because people just uh, aren't as into the Gray Hulk as maybe the uh, the regular classic Green Hulk, or if they were limited in some way. I don't have the exact uh, information on that one, but the Gray Hulk there with the uh, you know, the ripped shirt and the ripped clothes, it, it's pretty cool. It's a hefty figure. I think these uh, sold for $34.99, so these weren't those $19.99, $20 buck buy-ins of the regular figures. It's probably because it's a little oversized, as you can see. This is going to be a little bit more plastic, a little more weight and heft to it, but uh, I think it also came in this pretty cool uh, outside white box that uh, made it a little extra collectible, I guess, but uh, that one's averaging maybe uh, closer to $57 or so. Uh, I think it's right around there, like 57 to 60, you know, 60 bucks for this, uh, you know, the gray version of the character, which, you know, it's not too bad if you can find it. But again, you're not finding that on the, the regular shelves. You'll probably have to buy that online at this point uh, if you really wanted it. But uh, that was one, I guess, 1A. And then 1B would be the green version, the classic green version that everybody loves, uh, where there is no ripped clothing. It's just a straight up Hulk. Yeah, you know, there, I think they both come included with some uh, lead pipe or chrome or bar of some kind you know, that they can hold and like wave around. But uh, that one with the, the green version of the character, that one's averaging closer to hundred bucks. So again, that $35 buy-in, this one's returning about hundred bucks. I think there was a high sale of like 140 uh, somewhat recently, but uh, you see there, this would be like a $65 flip also coming in that white box. So if that was something you were able to get a hold of and you wanted to flip it, uh, you were able to do quite well, you know, moving that thing. Again, uh, that is the number one for this Marvel Legends series. The retro carded ones. Now, who's to say where these might go? Again, these are still relatively new. The oldest set came out in 2017, and uh, some more are coming, you know, as we speak. Uh, so we'll see where this uh, set goes. I mean, if I were to recommend buying any of these, I'd say get the ones that you like because they're just really cool to have. And uh, that old school carded look is uh, something you can't uh, you can't beat, really. I mean, I still kind of wish they would have put the uh, boulder in with the Hulk here, like they did with the uh, original. But you know. You can't have everything. So that said, those were the top five for the Marvel Legends retro carded figures as far as, you know, price-wise goes. The return on an investment that you can find going off of what people are actually buying. This is not me telling you what I am speculating on or saying what something is going to be worth. This is just 
actually based on the market research of how things are selling. These are the top five return on investments. As little you know, difference as there may be, this you know, list can shift weekly if we really wanted to. But this is just a moment in time that I'm just showing you what is kind of selling. So if you enjoyed it, you know, please, you know, you know, like, subscribe to the channel as a whole, like this video. Uh, if you want to see more, again, I'm going to continue on and do some honorable mentions of some figures that are coming out that are already pre-selling pretty well. Uh, so you might want to check that out if you want to know what's coming out and what to look for either online or on your shelves uh, on my channel. But uh, thank you. And uh, again, stick around if you want to check out the honorable mentions. For those of you who did manage to stick around, that's where we're gonna go. We're gonna go with the honorable mentions. I didn't wanna put these on the list, you know, the regular list, because it's kind of hard to gauge because these are mostly pre-order sales. These aren't actually even on the shelves yet. Some people are selling them, they have them in hand, they got them early, however, you know, that may be, but uh, I just didn't feel right putting that uh, on the list, you know, for the regular ones. So I put these a little bit separate because again, pre-order sales are really hard to track, not to track, but, Prices are very high to start. People just, they get FOMO, they really want, they want in, they pay way more than they, they will once, uh, you know, the figures are actually released and they see how many are actually out there and how some of these may not be as hard to get as they thought they might, you know, be. These aren't convention exclusives. These are figures, I believe, that will just be out there uh, for the most part. Uh, I think there might be one exclusive in here. I think there's a Target one. But still, things that you'll be able to find on the shelves once they're actually uh, dropping. And I think the release date on most of these, if not all of them, is 11:29. So, uh, you know, keep an eye out, you know, for them, you know, on your local store shelves. So the first one that seems to be selling, uh, first honorable mention, is uh, the Doctor Doom, which comes on a pretty cool uh, Fantastic Four retro card. Uh, I kind of dig this figure. It, uh, it looks, you know, the card is almost identical to the original one. Again, this is now the six inch size, which is a little bit bigger than uh, I want to say the other figures were, they weren't three and three quarters. They were maybe a four or five. I don't know. Whatever it is, they're a little bit bigger. So again, these are all $20 buy-ins. These are 1999, but the Dr. Doom's already selling for, you know, about 30, 33, you know, 34. So I think there's high sale about like 40 bucks. So it's not like a lot, but you know, double your money before it even comes out. Ain't too bad, I guess. So uh, that would be one honorable mention. And the next one after that is that Target exclusive that I loosely mentioned with, uh, it's a negative zone Spider-Man. Now that's also, you know, 20 bucks, you know, to buy in. But uh, if you were able to sell it or, you know, see it now, the average sales are about 36 uh, with a high, I think of 40, $46 or so that I've seen. And these highs are, are some prices that I grabbed just within the last week. I don't want to go back too far. I just basically looked over the last week of sales and just get kind of a, a broad, broad scope of the market, just like right now, moment in time. This is the last week of, of what I've been seeing. So, you know, prices, if you go back a little bit further, could be higher because that's way earlier in the pre-order process. And if you go drag it out as they go down, you can see prices are already starting to trend down as we near the release date of these figures. But I want to include everything that I've seen. So this is the last week of sales. So that's where we're at. Negative Zone Spider-Man is uh, like the second one on this list of honorable mentions because again, that was about $36, $37 uh, average. Now, moving on from that one, this one is actually pretty cool, also in the Spider-Man series, and uh, that's Black Cat. And uh, hers are you know, a little closer to 40 bucks, I would say, on the average. High, around like 47 So the highs on these are still pretty uh, pretty even on most of these uh, figures, but uh, I, I got to say the average, and you can see the more consistent sales. because Some of these will just sell close to the actual retail price, maybe like 23 25 uh, we'll sneak in there and then you'll see those mixed in ones with the 46, you know, that kind of bring that average, you know, to where it is. But the black cat would be right here in the middle of our, uh, of our list of, uh, you know, upcoming figures. Again, it's pretty cool. She comes with a little cat and you know, a little whip. There's a, you can see this, it's not exactly like the original, but you know, you can see some of the resemblances in the uh, original packaging to the, uh, to the newer one that's coming out. But that being said, now the original list had a two for number one. This last honorable mention is also not like a two for, but these two kind of go together. And uh, that's Rogan Gambit for the X-Men series. They're both coming out. These are both selling you know, pretty well coming out of the gate. So I'm going to start in first with the Gambit figure, which is averaging about like $45 sales. And there's a high of like a hundred bucks. So somebody really wanted this Gambit card. I really want one too, but I don't know if I'm paying a hundred bucks when I know this is coming out in a week, but if you want to make sure you get it, I guess you do what you got to do and you pay those high pre-order prices. But 100 bucks for Gambit as a high sale. But again, it's consistently going in that $45 range. So 
if you were able to get one, maybe this price holds, but it will most likely come down as we see what the actual you know, volume or, you know, you can't say print run. There's not really print run of toys because they can always just make more, but whatever we see that's actually on the shelves. So $45 ain't too bad for uh, Gambit, but he is edged out, I guess, for our honorable mentions with Rogue. And can you really be surprised? I mean, who didn't love Rogue from the 90s? It's just an awesome look, look. you know, with the leather jacket. It's just a cool figure. It's uh, done right. It, they, they did this figure before, but this one looks like it's a little bit uh, nicer, maybe in the sculpt and the mold. I don't know. I kind of dig it uh, a bit more. So that one is uh, more of like a $60 figure on average, where uh, I think that had a high, like 115 bucks just, uh, just recently as well. Uh, but again, sales are starting to trend a little bit down. They're starting to hit more closer to that $50 range. But they were initially up to like 100 bucks, but now they're getting down near 50 That's a pretty big drop-off over a couple of weeks' time, especially with pre-orders because, you know, these figures aren't even, you know, getting shipped out and mailed out to people. Uh, not yet. I mean, some people, again, they have them in hand. However, they got a hold of them early. Uh, but most, for the most part, these pre-orders, you're going to have to wait like everybody else. Not only that, you probably have to wait a little extra because if these people who are pre-selling these things have to wait for things to get shipped to them, and then they're going to ship it out to you, it's going to take even longer for you to get that. So... I don't know if you really need to uh, rush out and go pay for these, uh, you know, pre-order prices on some of these figures, unless it's, it's again, it's not a limited edition. It's not some exclusive of any kind. I would just wait, take your chances. I mean, anybody has access to, you know, the internet most of these days, or at least you do if you're watching this video. So you can buy this on Amazon, Target, Walmart, most of these big, bigger chain stores, they have figures. And that's not even accounting for the smaller places you might be able to get things from, like GameStops and uh, some of the smaller stores that uh, might carry toys uh, in your area. So I would not pay some of these crazy prices. $100 for a $20 figure that's not even released yet. It's just not something I would do. I mean, I, I, I understand FOMO, but that is a bit extreme. Just take a chance before you go and throw that money out there, because if you can't find it, I'm pretty sure it's still going to be $100 you know, in a few weeks. I doubt it's going to be a $200 figure, but hey, I could be wrong, and you could be cursing my name because you didn't act fast enough when you could have bought that Rogue, and uh, now you can't find it. My bad, but I'm just trying to give you a piece of friendly advice. I'm not paying 100 bucks for that Rogue. I really want it. I'm going to try to find it as best as I can, but I ain't paying 100 bucks. but yeah, that's just me. Anyway, I hope you like the list. I hope you like these videos. I like doing them because I do, I do like toys. Again, I'm not I'm looking up the information as far as sales go, so I don't, I'm not speculating on this. This is just reporting active sales. The little pieces of information that I'm offering you is because I'm a collector. I like to collect. I'm just trying to tell you to be a little, you just be smart with your money. Don't just throw it out there because I can't say there's a lot of return on investments with the toys in the same way that I know that there are with comics. I'm not saying that it isn't there. I'm just saying I don't have the experience doing it, so I'm not going to tell you to do that. So I'm not going to give crazy willy-nilly advice. I'm just telling you from a collector's perspective what I think and just reporting the market as I see it Yeah, in this moment in time. So this week, the Marvel carded retro figures is what I wanted to look at, and that was our list. Next week, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Maybe we'll do a Star Wars Black. Maybe I'll do a different version of Marvel Legends. I don't know yet. I'm going to see what uh, catches my eye uh, over the next week. So again, hopefully you enjoy this series, and hopefully you want to see more. Any suggestions you have? Make your comments down in the comment sections. Please like, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys next time.